Good morning, family, and we welcome you. It's good to see you again. And uh, we trust that this morning God is really going to touch and change your life. As we always do, we start with a declaration. Are you ready? One, two, three. I'm a son of God revealed. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm a life-giving spirit. I accept his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection power in my life. I'm bound to his word and can do what it says I can do. I receive the word with meekness and I'm changed from glory to glory. I have the God kind of faith. I'm the righteousness of God and will never be the same. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. If you've declared that, you've declared the word of God. The word of God is active it's alive. It is Jesus that manifested the word that became flesh and we could see his glory. As you declare the word of God, you will see the glory of God will start to manifest in your life. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? It's really going to inspire you and lift up your faith. But before I start sharing, let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your tremendous grace that you have towards us, Lord. Thank you, Master Jesus, that you always remain faithful even when we are unfaithful, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are busy strengthening us, that you are busy shaping us, forming us, O oh Lord, to take us from where we are to where you want us to be. Lord, in this morning, let faith be stirred up in the hearts of your people in Jesus' mighty name. Let your people hear your voice upon my voice, O oh Lord. We thank you for that. We bless you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Family, this morning I want to talk to you about trust. The, the kind of trust that we should have in the Word of God that moves mountains, that moves situations, difficulties. And when we read the Bible in Genesis 1 verse 3, it says, And God spoke, He declared His Word. He said, Let there be light and there was light family when you think about that things that were not there things that we could not see with our eyes God spoke every one of those things into existence when he said let there be light there was light when you look at verse 14 it says the firmament the, the stars that we see today God spoke those things into existence God had placed trust in His Word. Things that we could not see with our own eyes. God started declaring those things and saying those things. I want to ask you this question. What have you been declaring over yourself? What have you been declaring over your situation? What have you been declaring over the good future that God has planned for you? Remember, it's God's expression what he decreed and declared by believing it, exercising that faith that brought all these things into being. If you have that trust, that faith and assurance in God's word, when you start declaring it, the Bible says the mountain that you are facing right now, when you believe and you speak to that mountain, that mountain will be moved. I'm not talking about wishful thinking. Wishful thinking cannot move a mountain. But that trust and assurance that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ is what makes the difference. Family, listen to me. God has deposited good things on the inside of you, gifts on the inside of you. Those gifts should be manifested. God wants those things that are on the inside of you to come to the outside in a time like this. That assurance, that trusted faith that you have in your heart is the thing that makes the difference. It's easy to say that you're a man of faith or a woman of faith, but nothing changes because you are just hoping. And hoping is always putting it in the future. But it's the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ that brings that situation into the present because faith acts now. Faith believes now and faith receives now. As long as you continue to hope, you are placing that thing out of reach. You are placing that thing in the future. But when you add substance to that hope, everything changes. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. 
and faith and hope go together. Hope is in the future. It's that good future that you are hoping for. But it's faith that is the substance that God has given us. That's why you have to start to declare it and decree it. When God spoke these things into existence, he did not doubt his word. I want to encourage you in this morning. The word that God has given you, the promise that God has given you, never ever doubt that word. Family, adding substance to your hope is adding Jesus. What am I talking about? I'm talking about faith that comes from the regenerated spirit of man. Not faith that comes from our thinking, mental intellect. I'm talking about faith that comes from the regenerated spirit of man. That kind of faith that you exercise when you believe that he who knew no sin became sin so that you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It is that righteousness of Christ Jesus that sanctifies us, that makes us holy, so that now when you speak and declare the word of God, your words can be as pure and holy as His. When you have faith that comes from your mind, you, you are merely convinced. We're talking about somebody that's converted. This is the kind of faith that can move mountains, family. We are to be converted, born from above. This is the kind of trust that we have in the Word of God that can move the impossible. Family, when you find yourself on that solid foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a foundation that cannot be shaken. You can trust the Word of God knowing that it's reliable. That's the kind of trust that allows you to move the impossible, a foundation built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on, it endures, he will receive a reward. Family, our faith is to be expressed through deeds. It's not just having the foundation, but it's building on this foundation. When we look at Genesis 15, we can see that Abraham understood this principle. After God had given him his promise, his son, the Lord said, I want you to sacrifice your only son. Family, because he trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, because he knew that God can move the impossible, that would seem impossible, God can make it possible. Remember, he experienced it. The Bible teaches us that his body was dead. It was impossible for him or Sarah to have any children. But he trusted God and moved the impossible. What God valued about Abraham is that he trusted him. The faith that he had in God, knowing that he is faithful and just. He knew that the promise that God had given him, that God would make a way. And when he found himself ready to make the sacrifice, and his son said, where is the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? Abraham, with all confidence, said, the Lord will provide. Family, even in our situation that we find ourselves now, a difficult situation like what we've never faced, I want to encourage you, put your trust in God, and you'll see He will move the impossible for you and for me. Family, when we see this, we realize that trusting God is not just in prayer alone, praying in faith, but acting in faith. Abraham had to take the action, walk with his son, say, let me put the firewood on your back. 
We are going to worship. Family, it gives us hope to know it's not just about praying faith, but acting faith. I want to encourage you in this time, not just to pray, but to act faith. Remember, our faith without deeds doesn't really mean anything. Faith believes now, it receives now, but it acts now. In a situation like this, when we have sent our petitions to God, when we have prayed, it's a time to rest in the mighty arms of the Holy Spirit and to hear what God has to say about the situation. It is very easy to get anxious now, but in a time like this where you put your trust in the Word of God, hear what God is saying. Trust His Word and you'll see He will move the impossible. Family, in this time, you need to add trust. You need to add perseverance. You need to add hope, substance to that faith to, to see the promise that will manifest in your life. In this process, you need to add trust and perseverance and patience and hope adding substance to your faith, knowing that God will perform and do that which He has promised. You have to trust the process and know that God is in control. Think about a computer for one minute. Sometimes you have to install new software. Then you have to press that button that says install and restart. Family, in that process, while well, the computer is installing and restarting, you don't press the button the whole time and say it's not working. You know there's a process and you have to trust it. In the same way, God has installed everything that you need to live a successful life. Right now we find ourselves where we have to restart. We have to reboot ourselves and even change our way of thinking and doing things. But you know, after the process, everything's going to work better. It's going to be to your advantage. Turn to the person next to you and say, I think I'm going through an install and restart moment right now, but I'm trusting the process that God has installed everything that I need to live a successful life. I'm going to trust Him and see the impossible be moved. Family, I want to encourage you that this process is busy bringing a solution into your life. Remember that faith is, is not a formula. God does not respond to a formula, but it is faith that moves God. I want to encourage you that faith is not instructing God what to do, but faith is resting in His arms, knowing what is His will and what is His word say about your situation. Trusting Him and knowing that He's busy working out the answer and the solution to your problem. Have you made a decision in your heart to trust God? Have you purposed in your heart to say above all, I'm going to trust your word and your promises? We oftentimes start to order God around when we don't know what is God's will and plan for our lives. When you know what God has planned for you, you don't have to order Him around. You don't have to instruct Him. Remember, He created us. When He made you family, He was thinking good things about you. When He made you, when you were in your mother's womb, He had called you already. He had placed gifts on the inside of you. The Word of God is a guide to show us and to lead us so that we can know what is God's will for our life. When we don't know His promises, we want to instruct Him what to do. But when we know His will, we will receive instruction from Him. And we can trust Him knowing that He will move the impossible. Family, God's will means God's promises for your life. Don't jump the gun. Don't look for a shortcut. Sometimes, the way that God will execute His plans in our lives may differ. Sometimes we go through things that we did not expect. But even in that time of difficulty, like what we are facing right now, our trust can be in God knowing that He's working out the answer and the solution 
to our situation. Family, you can ask Daniel, sometimes you find yourself in a very unpleasant situation, events that you did not plan, and you can find yourself in the lion's den. But it's there where he realized that when you honor God in your trials, God will honor you in your trials. It would have been foolish of Daniel to have questioned his faith just because he found himself in the lion's den. It was in that situation where he placed his trust in God that God moved the impossible for him and closed the mouth of every lion in that den. Some people want to plan everything by themselves and they want to leave God out. Family, when you don't include God in your situation, you can see beyond your situation. Family, I want to remind you again, Abraham with Isaac, that he placed his trust in God and God moved the impossible for him. Abraham knew that Isaac was a child of promise and that God would not delight in killing his promise. Family, I want to encourage you that in the beginning, it always seems difficult to obey God. But as you start to realize and to know that what God has planned for you, what God has predestined for you, what God is asking of you, it's for your own good. Then being obedient to the word of God becomes easier and easier because you know God is busy helping you, taking you from glory to glory and from strength to strength. It really honors God to believe while everything contradicts it. Your senses screaming and shouting at you, saying that it's impossible. But you decreeing and declaring in your heart that it is possible. Let me think about Moses for one minute, facing a Red Sea with all the people. Everything contradicted that it was possible to move to the other side. But Moses trusted God. When God spoke to him and said, Moses, the enemy that you see today, you will not see them ever again. Stop crying out to me and know that I'm going to fight for you. Family, when he placed his trust in God, God moved the impossible for him and the waters opened up and Moses with all of Israel, a type of the church, could move from this side to the other side. I mean, they were moving from where they were to where God wanted them to be. Family, the word of God teaches us that blessed are those who believe, who have not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's that which you cannot see because faith sees the invisible. It moves the impossible and it receives the incredible. You can be assured knowing that you can put your trust in God. And as you put your trust in God, He will move the impossible for you. Remember, faith based on what is seen lacks the quality of being stable. Anybody can say thank you, Jesus, when they've seen the manifestation. But it takes a man and woman of faith to say thank you, Jesus, when they've not yet seen the manifestation. Family, remember, we live by faith and not by sight. When we look at the life of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego finding themselves in a very difficult situation, they had put their trust in God knowing that He is their deliverer. Their trust was such a confident trust that they said to the king, we want you to know, in Daniel chapter 3, we want you to know, king, that whether our God delivers us or not, He is still our deliverer. Family, when they declared the word of God with trust and assurance in the creator of the universe, their maker, the Holy Spirit affected their words. And that which seemed impossible became possible. Fire, heat, flames that should have burned them. Their words were affected by the Holy Spirit 
and you could not even smell smoke upon them. I want to encourage you when you place your trust in the word of God, your faith in a faithful God, decreeing and declaring you are creating with your mouth. And that trust in Him will move the impossible. It is your words as a believer, as you decree and declare it, that that natural law, the things that seem impossible, that faith and trust in God, decreeing and declaring it, makes those things possible. Remember, all tests is there to help your character. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, it was their trust in God that revealed their character, knowing that He is faithful. I want to encourage you to decree and declare the Word of God. In Genesis 1, we can see that God had placed trust in His Word, knowing that things that are unseen as He declares the Word of God, He saw the manifestation thereof. Family, in the same way you are made in the image and the likeness of God. You have a source that is reliable. Even when natural things are coming against you, you have a supernatural God supporting you. As you decree and declare, trusting the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will affect it. That trust will move the impossible. Remember, whatever you are facing right now, God is using it to bring maturity into your life, to shape you for the good future that He has planned for you. Family, you find yourself on a solid foundation. As you find yourself on this solid foundation and you know the promises of God, you can rest assured that when you declare the Word of God, the promises of God, the will of God, that you know that the Holy Spirit will affect it. That trust will move the impossible. The first step of our work of faith is to stop our own work and to rely upon the love, the power, the hope that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Family, that has become your solid foundation. When you find yourself on this firm foundation, this solid foundation, you can rest assured. You can know that God is in control of your life. Even when things are shaken around you, you find yourself on a firm foundation. Now, the trials and the challenges becomes the soil in which your faith will flourish because your trust is in God and you know that He will move the impossible. You can trust His promises because He's placed you on a firm foundation. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. Yet the Lord is faithful and He will strengthen you and set you on a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. Family, in this time where so many people are experiencing so much evil, wondering what does the future hold, what's going to happen, I want to remind you that God has placed you and set you upon a firm foundation foundation. That foundation is a rock that's higher than you and me. It's what David said, in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. He will place me high upon a rock. That rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is your firm foundation so that you can place your trust in him and know that he will move the impossible for you. Selah. Let me pray for you. Precious Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, your tremendous grace that you have towards us. Thank you, Lord, that we have your word as an example, O Lord, to put our trust in God in everything, knowing, Lord, that as we decree and declare 
your promises, Lord, that you are faithful and just to perform them, that your word can never return back void, O Lord. Lord, even in this time of despair, where people are worrying about the future, make them aware of your presence, O Lord. Let them know that they are on a solid rock, a firm foundation, O Lord. Let faith be stirred up in the hearts of your people, O Lord, that they may start to decree and declare the Word of God over their situation, O Father, over their career, over their family, O Father. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that. Father, we come and declare your Word right now, Father, that you are a shield, that you are your people's protection, O Father, that you are the exceedingly great reward. Father, even in this time, we decree and declare, Father, and say that the helmet of salvation, Father, will protect their thoughts, O Father. The arguments going on in their minds, O oh Father. Lord, let the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ rule and reign in their minds, in their thoughts, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, every thought, every argument, every vain imagination, we take it captive right now and we bring it in line with the mind and the will of the Lord Jesus Christ for your people, Father. Enlighten their eyes concerning the good future that you have planned, that they can see it, Father. Let them meditate upon it, Father. Rekindle promises, prophetic words, O Father, that you have given your people in their spirits once again to believe your word, to believe that you're a big God, that you're a great God, that you're a good God, that you can do the impossible. Father, as you did it for Moses, as you did it for Daniel, as you did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Father, do it for your people in Jesus' mighty name. Father, right now, we command your light into every household, for in your light there is life, O oh Father. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that. Father, in this time, let people not doubt their sonship, Father, your sons and your daughters, Lord. Let them be aware of the righteous breastplate that protects their heart, O oh Father. Let them be aware of the righteousness of God that's on the inside of them, O oh Father. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that. Father, let the word of your truth, the belt, Father, of truth, be around them, O oh Father, to strengthen them, to uphold them, to gird them, Father, wherever they go in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in this time, thank you, Lord, for the shoes of the gospel, O oh Father. Lord, that your people will go out and preach your goodness, Father, your salvation, your mercy, your healing, your deliverance, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, most of all, we want to pray for the shield of faith. Lord, be your people's protection, Father. Lord, thank you that you are praying right now that faith will not fail in the hearts of your people, O Lord, that they will uphold the shield of faith, O Lord, and the sword of the Spirit, O Lord, your word. Lord, let them decree and declare it, O Father. Lord, we have come as your people to say that you're a good God, that you're a mighty God, that you're an awesome God, O Father. Lord, that you hold our futures in your hands, O Father, and that you are busy perfecting everything concerning us, even in this time, shaping us and forming us, O Lord. Let faith arise in your people's hearts. Grant unto them the kind of faith you need, O Father in Jesus' mighty name, to meet all their needs, O oh Father. Lord, we see even in this time, we decree and declare double doors of mercy and grace to open up for your people, O oh Father. Lord, thank you for your hand of provision for every person, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, make us alert and aware of where people are going through challenges, O oh Lord, to, to be our brother's keeper, to be our sister's keeper, O oh Father, to encourage each other in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, Father, we leave your peace in every home, O oh Father, as they put their trust in you, move the impossible for them, O oh Lord. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that. O oh Lord, in the hard times, you are beautiful, and in the good times, you are beautiful. We've come to say, Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Family, I want to encourage you Trust Him. He is faithful and true. If God the Father did not withhold the beauty of heaven 
but gave him to you, how much more will he not give you all things and move the impossible? I want to encourage you to join us tonight at five. I'm going to be ministering on that. You have faith to overcome. It's not something you have to look for. You have faith to overcome. So I want to encourage you, be a part of that message at five this afternoon. If you know people are feeling like they're not going to make it, let them join in and listen to this message. Faith is something that we have. Faith that will overcome any situation. So I want to encourage you, be a part of that. Let me declare a blessing over you. Raise your hands to heaven right there where you are. Father, right now, we bless your people with every blessing that's in Christ Jesus and we declare that only your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday and we'll see you at five.